Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today have I got a deal for you. Today I'm going to show you how to get an excellent desktop computer for under $200. Yes, you heard me right, under $200. Now, there are many, many computers on the market. High speed, low speed, expensive, inexpensive. If you want a new computer, this video is not for you because these are all refurbished and used computers. But that's okay because I'm going to help you sort through that and figure out what to buy. If you want a new computer, if you want to click a link, know exactly what you're going to get, have full warranty and not have to worry about anything, then what I recommend is the ASUS M32 CD desktop computer. I've previously reviewed it. I'll put a link to the YouTube video here. You can click that and go watch that. Excellent computer, state of the art in all respects. But that computer is $450. It's a good deal for what you get and I highly recommend it. But what we're doing today is going, what if I want to spend less? What if I want to spend a lot less, under $200, for a fully functional computer ready to use out of the box? Now, I have two computers in front of me. And the reason these are here is primarily to show you what's possible, what you should look at, and what you should avoid. This computer is an Acer Aspire XC. I bought this a few months ago off of eBay, thinking it would be a good deal thinking that it would be a, a home theater machine. I was going to put this underneath my television at home and use it to uh, uh, surf the web on the television and, and play videos and, and whatnot. It turns out the performance of this thing is terrible. It is so bad, I'm actually selling this because it's just not usable. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute. Um, why do you think Acer's bad? No, 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 no. Don't misunderstand me. Acer's fine. This is not a knock against Acer. It's a knock against the processor in this machine. I have in the very next room an Acer um, i5 desktop computer that is just fine. This is not a knock against Acer. It's a knock against the Intel Celeron J1900 CPU in here. Intel Celeron J1900 and Pentium J2900 Terrible processors, nobody should use them, don't buy them. But they look attractive on paper because this has a true four core processor running at up to 2.4 gigahertz, four gigs of RAM, 500 gigabyte hard drive. It looks great on paper. HD graphics, it sounds great. It's, I can't overstate it, it's terrible. Don't buy this machine. Don't buy anything with a Celeron J1900 or a Pentium J2900 in it. They all are horrible. In fact, those processors are so bad, Intel has just canned the entire division within the past couple of weeks that makes this line of processors, and they've completely canceled them and discontinued them because it really is that bad. So there won't be any future lines on this department. Over here, we have an Intel i5 2400 CPU. Now what's interesting is this computer is one year old. This one is five years old. This is from 2011. So in 2016 where we're shooting this video, this computer is now five years old. These are actually very common and easy to find now and I'm going to tell you in a minute how to find them because they're off lease machines. This was a business class computer. This is a Dell Optiplex uh, 790 computer. Now there's many different models. It's not just this one. It's the CPU inside that we're interested in, the i5-2400. There's more details to it, but I will put a link in the video description below that will take you to eBay, not Amazon. I can't find any decent sellers on Amazon selling these for reasonable prices. You want to find these on eBay. That link will take you to the computer desktop section of eBay, pre-searched for i5-2400, buy it now, sorted from lowest price to highest price. But you need to look at more details than that. More on that in a second. I bought this computer last week for less than $200. There are hundreds of these listed on eBay right now. There are thousands of them coming off of lease from large companies. So you can find many, many, many of these, and they're not all Dells. Uh, there are HP and compact, compact machines. There are Levino machines, a variety of manufacturers. It doesn't really matter. Any of the name brands are fine. Maybe even Acer. I, there probably weren't a lot of Acers back then put into businesses, but if there are, they're fine too. 
The reason why this is such a good deal is because this is what's called Sandy Bridge or the second generation of Intel's core i-series CPUs. What does all that mean? Sandy Bridge is a code name. Intel has had various code names over the years. I won't bore you with the code names, but this is a Sandy Bridge chip and it's the first of the modern generation of chips that really competes well today in 2016. They have chips from before this that are still decent, but they're starting to really show their age. This is the oldest I would recommend for most people. Now, this machine came with four gigabytes of RAM and a 250 gigabyte hard drive, but that's not important because they come in all different sizes. Some come with no hard drives, which I don't recommend. Some come with 250, some come with 500. I've seen even a few with a one terabyte drive. This is where you have to be willing to do a little bit of investigation yourself. You have to look through the listings and find the right machine for you. So, talking about eBay. Friends and family and my YouTube viewers, who as far as I'm concerned are all the same thing. If my friends and family in real life came to me and said, I want to spend max $200, I want a good high performance computer, and I want it to work out of the box with no hassles. I don't want to have to install operating systems. I don't want to have to install hard drives or RAM or do anything else. I just want a computer that I can plug in the wall and use. Great, this is the advice I'm giving you. What you want to look for is A, you want to find a machine that is not, I repeat, not listed for parts. That means they don't work. That means that it's just for resellers and refurbishers who just want bare metal. You can find those for $50 or less. But the problem is, is if they don't work, what good is it? Now, you also want a machine that has Windows 7 or higher. There are a number of machines on there that do not have Windows at all. They may have a hard drive, but the drive is blank. You don't want those. You want the ones that have at least Windows 7 or higher. Now, why Windows 7? You will find some with Windows Vista, which is the one that came before 7, and you will find some that came with Windows XP. The problem is Microsoft will let you upgrade Windows 7 for free to Windows 10, but not Vista and not XP. It's not worth the trouble, don't bother. This particular machine has right on the top a genuine Windows 7. In this case, it's a home premium certificate of authenticity with the product key written right on the machine. So you want a machine that has the Windows COA, which stands for Certificate of Authenticity, right on the machine. And preferably, you want Windows already installed on the drive, so you can just plug it in and go. Now, Windows 8 is okay as well. I mean, you may find a couple of these with Windows 8, but Windows 8 was relatively new. But Windows 8 came out, you might find one or two. Most of them are going to have Windows 7. Now, you also want one that has four gigabytes of RAM or more. A bunch of these have two, and two is not useful anymore in 2016. Even for browsing the internet, you open up uh, Internet Explorer, you open up Chrome, you open up Firefox. Even two gigabytes is just not enough. I personally recommend eight gigabytes, but very few of these machines have eight. This particular machine has four, but it has four memory slots. Two are filled with two, uh, two, two gigabyte sticks and the other two are empty. It's relatively easy to add the RAM if you want to do that sort of thing. Four gigabytes is enough for a basic web browsing machine. Eight's better, don't get two. Furthermore, you want to look at the seller themselves eBay is not like Amazon. You want to look for a seller, and this is again my opinion, who has at least several hundred feedback, not 10, not 20, not 50. I preferably would like to see at least 500, 1,000 is better, but if you're selling these type of machines, you should have at least 500 feedback. If you don't, what are you doing? It should be 99% or better. It's very hard to hit 100%. I mean, 100% is obviously the best, but at least 99% are better, and you want somebody who writes a decent product description. Why? Because anybody who cleans up these machines and gets it ready for sale, who can't be bothered to do more than write two sentences, isn't somebody you want to buy a computer from. Let me show you something. I have not done anything to the inside of this machine. I got this machine this morning. I've been waiting to get this to shoot this video. I did open this up just to look inside. I did not clean it out. I did not use any compressed air to blow this out. This is exactly how I received it this morning. This machine has been out of the box for about three hours. I'm 
Now, how much you can see in here will depend upon what resolution you're watching the video at, but that is clean as a whistle. They clearly cleaned this machine. There is no dust on the fan, on the heat sink. Um, I run my hand inside the computer. It is remarkably dust free. It probably has more dust on it from being in my office than it did when I first opened it. It is incredible how clean this is. Now, I did not buy the least expensive one of these I could find on eBay. You can find some of these for $120, $130. I paid $150 for this. Why? I want to buy from a seller who's got at least 500 feedback. I want them to have at least 99% feedback rating. I want at least a 30-day warranty on these things. Many of them are basically, well, it'll work when you get it, but beyond that, it's not my problem. As far as I'm concerned, I want somebody who will stand behind it at least 30 days. Some of them offer 60 days, some offer 30, a few 90, you're not gonna get much more than that. A 30-day warranty, and in the description, they actually had a full description typed out listing all the parts that came with it. This CPU, this much memory, this kind of hard drive, and it said in the description, we have cleaned these machines out blown the dust out of them, you will get a nice ready to use machine. I said, you know what? I'll pay you an extra 10 or 20 bucks for that because I don't have to worry that I'm gonna get some piece of junk that's been kicked around the floor and paid no attention to. Furthermore, this machine's five years old and it was sold as used. Take a look at the case. Now I realize you're not gonna be able to buy this exact machine, but if you buy from the right seller, if you listen to me and go, you know what? That guy is selling for 120, but he has 50 feedback and he just typed three sentences and put nothing in his description and he's offering no warranty and this guy wants twenty dollars more but he actually typed a description out offers a warranty he has three thousand feedback it's 99.8 percent positive that's where i bought this from i bought this from a guy who had thousands of feedback and it was 99.8 percent positive and he had a nice description typed out and let me tell you it's not new you can clearly tell this machine is not new but look how nice that looks. I think that was worth the extra $20. I, I paid an extra $30. It was $140 something dollars, but it's really, really nice. I'm very happy with it. Now, positive feedback, good description. You don't want it listed for working or parts. You want the person to say, everything works. I warranty for 14 or 30 or 60 days. You want to make sure it has the Windows Certificate of Authenticity on it. It'll say like, you know, Win COA or, or Win 7 COA or something like that. No Vista, no XP. Make sure it's Windows 7. Make sure that it comes with both the hard drive and RAM. Many of the descriptions can be kind of, you know, shaky. They might say, sure, it's got a hard drive or sure it has a COA, but there's no hard drive. Now, in theory, you could get a hard drive, plug it in, download Windows, put it in, type in the COA, and you might be okay. Why mess with all that? Why not just go ahead and have the whole thing ready to go? Like I said, I paid just under $148, I think it was, with shipping with this. That's well under $200. Now, you may or may not find a deal that good. You might find one for $160 or $170. Speaking of which, you might find one for $180. But if it comes with a 700 meg hard drive and 8 gigs of RAM, that might be a really good deal too. You got to take into account what's in it. This had a 250 gig drive. If this had had a one terabyte drive and had been $30 more, it would have been worth every penny. If this had had a one terabyte drive and eight gigs of RAM, I'd have paid 200 for it all day long. So what comes in it, you can look down the list and pick out the one that's right for you. Four gigs of RAM, hard drive is personal. Frankly, it's easy enough to add an external hard drive. If you need a lot more storage than this, you might need a faster computer anyway. Performance. I will be doing a second video where I've taken this and put it away. I'll have this hooked up to a monitor. I'm going to have it booted up to Windows. And I'm going to show you what kind of performance you can expect out of a five-year-old computer. Now, I've done performance videos before. This will be very similar. I'm not probably going to put an SSD in here unless I get requests for it. I do plan to keep this machine, by the way. I told you I had bought this machine to go into my media center. Well, I'm actually selling this machine. Um, this machine is going to go into my media center. It is so much faster. I haven't actually turned it on yet, but frankly, I know how fast Sandy Bridges are. I'm not worried about it. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback. That's what the comment section below is for. Was this helpful for you? Did I give you enough information to help you 
find the right machine on eBay. Now, feel free to find a computer on eBay and link it in the comment section below. Just realize that if you do that, somebody else may buy it relatively quickly. That being said, look at the quantity field on eBay. Some of these sellers have dozens of these machines. There was one seller, I looked not five minutes before I started shooting this video as I was kind of going over what I wanted to say and where the market was. One seller had several um, of the slim machines from Compaq HP. They were sort of this size, a little bit taller. They had four gigs of RAM and I want to say they had 500 gig hard drives, Windows 7, um, $130, quantity more than 10. So you could buy five of them if you wanted to. So some of these some of these companies on eBay have hundreds of these machines. A couple of them will have pictures of pallets full of them. So they're really good deals. Um, was this helpful? Uh, post a link below if you want specific feedback about a machine. I'll be happy to give you my input, thoughts, and advice. Like this video. Don't like it? You know what to do. Subscribe is right down there. Um, I know there was one other thing I wanted to mention. Hopefully you're still watching at this point and haven't gotten bored. Video output. Less of an important thing, but I think it's still important. Five-year-old machines often don't have HDMI output. This one does, and all new machines are going to have HDMI output, but five years ago a lot didn't. Now some did. The consumer line of Dells did the Inspiron lines, but they cost more. The business lines didn't, but what they do have is something called DisplayPort, and it's right here. If you've never used DisplayPort before, DisplayPort is a digital output, unlike VGA, Video Graphics Array, which is analog. DisplayPort is like HDMI, but kind of different. You can buy off of Amazon a DisplayPort to HDMI cable for $10 or so. I will put a link to that in the description below as well. When you look at the pictures on eBay, preferably you want to get a machine that has got DisplayPort in it because that will give you digital perfect video out and you can plug that into basically any monitor because the adapter cables to convert this to either DVI or HDMI are inexpensive and they work in 99% of all cases. If you have an older VGA monitor, no worries, there is a VGA port, but, and I'm pointing to them on this computer, the computers you see on eBay may be different, but most of them have a display port, so that's a really nice thing to have. So if you need an adapter cable, I will put links in the video description below to display port to HDMI and display port to DVI. But if you by chance you have a monitor that has a display port, well this is irrelevant. You just use the display port to display port and it's not an issue. If you have a VGA only monitor, not an issue. Plug in the VGA port and off you go. That was the last point I wanted to make. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.